Good morning. Uh, everything went well in Bennington. Got resupplied, which I needed desperately. Got the free shower. Hit the laundromat, got that done. So that's feeling good. Uh, so bizarre story. Uh, went to McDonald's last night. Got stuck there because there was no taxi. We couldn't figure out how to get back to the trail. We hitched a ride over. But then once it was dark and it was late, you know, people aren't really picking people up at a McDonald's. We didn't really think that through. So I was like, oh, no sweat. We'll call a cab and see how much it is. Well, they said they were busy and it would take an hour and a half. At this point, it was already 10 o'clock at night. But I said, well, I don't really know how else we're going to get out of here. So, okay, we'll take the cab. Uh, and then I'm sitting at McDonald's and I look over and there's a guy that looks really familiar ordering food. And then he talks and when he talks, I'm like, yeah, he is really familiar. And I'm trying to figure out who it was. And I realize it's this guy, Eric, who had given us a ride when play by play was hiking with me at Sam's Gap, which is mile about 320 on the AT. A friend of ours had told us about this guy and I'd given him a call and he had picked us up and taken us to a buffet and he took us to REI when Play by Play got his, his new Ultra Lone Peaks uh, at mile 300. And then completely randomly, I see this guy in a McDonald's at mile 1600. He's 1300 miles up the trail. It was like, it was this moment of just like, when you think you hear trail magic, I mean, yeah, it's sodas and burgers and stuff, but this was like the first time that I was like, this actually feels almost like magic. The fact that this person who like, that we met at mile 300 on the trail is standing in a McDonald's at almost 11 o'clock at night, 1300 more miles up the trail. So very crazy. Uh, Ended up calling the cab company back because he said, you know, it's late and I'm tired, and, but I, I'll give you a ride back to the trailhead if you need it. He offered and and uh, I took him up on it. So Eric, you are the man, man. And I, we had a chat about it the whole way back, how just weird it was. But um, the Appalachian Trail has a way of kind of first you're stressed you're not really sure what's gonna happen and then you get keep getting hit with this feeling that you're exactly where you're supposed to be and that's how it felt it really did it felt like oh my gosh I'm stranded at a McDonald's at 10 o'clock at night all because my hiker hunger was not getting you got the bet you know it gets the best of you and you're for no reason, you go to a McDonald's at 10 o'clock at night not thinking about the ride back. And then the trail just, something happens and you go, man, this is right where I'm supposed to be. So, anyway, sorry, a bit of a long-winded story, but it was, uh, I thought it was magical, uh, very unexpected, and I thought it was a good example of how the trail can kind of surprise you even after you've been out here 1600 miles and you think you've probably seen it all anyway uh, this is Vermont today um, they call it Vermud we have not had a ton of rain so there's not a ton of mud but there are these spots I think I'm coming up to one like this yep where it's just kind of randomly muddy it's weird there's no it's not wet over there in the trees it's not wet anywhere else on trail but then you just get these like that same thing like a patch of mud uh, and there was a sign that said we saw a sign that said vermont gets muddy please just walk through it don't go around because 
damaging the vegetation, you know, just stay on trail. So I've just been walking through it. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, so I'm probably two, two or three miles from Goddard Shelter. Um, not moving too quickly. The climb up out of the road into Bennington was very steep, very tough. And then three little gradual ups. And then it's just like, today's a day of just going up. So I was thinking about going as far as Story Spring, which is like 20 miles. Um, Goddard Shelter seems like kind of a short day, but I'm actually thinking about maybe just going there. Um, there's one shelter in the middle, which is Kid Gore, uh, which I've heard does not have a good water source and has a bear problem. So I don't want to get stuck where I have to push all the way to Story. So we may just do Goddard today and then switch up our plans to go to the next shelter the next day or something. I don't know. That's the AT. You make a plan and then you get more information and you sometimes revise the plan. So anyway, we got a couple more ups since this is a day of all ups uh, to the top of Glassenberry Mountain, uh, which is uh, 3,800 feet, I believe. So it's definitely a climb. Anyway, this is Vermont today. And uh, I'm just enjoying it. It's quiet out here, it's peaceful. And uh, it's difficult sweating, and I just still don't have enough water, but. Goddard's shelter is supposed to have a really good water source, so we'll probably check in up there and uh... Beautiful I don't think so okay. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Some comment you got hooks so that a bear box and I think we can see one Yeah, we can find one either Okay, thank you Yeah To the right left. Down there, yeah. Okay. Down that trail. Hey y'all. It's uh six ten in the morning. Stayed at Goddard Shelter. Just made the point three climb the rest of the way up to Glassenberry Mountain, standing on top of it now, inside out it's going up to the fire tower, um, apparently this was 1927 this was built, uh, it's a small one, I expected like this huge fire tower but it's, it's a little bit smaller than some of the others but it's nice. Uh, we're headed towards uh, up and over Stratton Mountain today, which is going to be a big one. Terrain till then looks pretty good and easy, but the end of our day will be a climb up there. Can you, can you go all the way? Anyways, I'll check in with y'all soon. up all the like glitter off the water. The picture does, makes it really fun. Yeah, 
This is pretty. Oh no, oh the truck went right that way. 